Good day. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, classification using nearest neighbors and my agenda is very clear. I'm going to walk through what a scenario around uh, which where we see the need of having K classification. What is like K classification? I'm going to run some demos specifically around uh, Azure machine learning and uh, what are the things which one can achieve and cannot achieve in Azure ML from a K classification standpoint of view. And then I'm going to walk through certain demos around um, the R object model. So I may kind of start with uh, you know talking about the demo side of the R object model. And then I'm going to talk in terms of where you're really going to be using K classification. And the last I'm going to be leaving everybody on a note in terms of the K SWOT. So without further delay, uh, I'm going to get into a scenario where it's classical place. You know, we, we eat a lot of food, and the food has certain taste. Uh, it's it's got certain crunchy factor, and so we kind of go ahead and build a graph in terms of how crunchy the food is, how sweet the you know food taste, and based on that, we 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 just come up with this rough rough graph where we actually talk about lettuce, celery and green uh, being you know, all kind of enclosed to one another and carrot so and so, depending on the crunchiness factor and the sweetness. And similarly, you see on the right hand side, you see a lot of the sweetness where you see apple, bear, grape, banana, uh, orange, which are high on the sweet factor. Apple's kind of crunchy up there and plus it's sweet. So that's the reason it's upright in the corner. And on the on the lower right, you on the lower left, you see uh, a lot of food items, which are cheese, shrimp, bacon, nuts, fish, which are relatively uh, soft and they don't, they're not sweet, so they kind of fall into that category. So as we kind of start plotting the data, we, we start seeing certain amount of boundaries getting formed and these boundaries what eventually we kind of classify them as fruits or vegetables or proteins. And uh, so let's take an example where, you know, I need to go ahead and predict something um, new, which is coming, and I need to go ahead and say where exactly it basically lies. So I see tomato. I mean, tomato is one part of the problem where we've really not got a very, very sure answer. And uh, what really, based on the sweetness of tomato and the crunchiness of tomato, we, we kind of see it's somewhere between the fruit and vegetable. And what lines you see in, in, in terms of, you know, the tomato to a green bean and tomato to a grape and tomato to nuts and tomato to orange, that distance uh, is called Euclidean distance in uh, in uh, the, the scientific world. And uh, uh, I'll get to a minute in terms of what. So the whole problem solving of classification by trying to group all the I data items which is similar in nature based on their, their features is something what we begin to get, we do some kind of classification. It's called clustering. So we, we kind of put all the data in terms of clusters and then we, we you know the clusters depending how well formed they are any new item can, which kind of comes up we are at a point of basically uh, you know, predicting in terms of what cluster it falls and hence we can tell what is a tomato or what is not a tomato okay so going uh, some definitions so KNN we call so this classification which I just talked about is KNN which is a principle to classify data by class by placing it in in the category with the most similar or the nearest neighbor like you saw in the earlier example the Euclidean distance where which is the distance one would measure if you could use a ruler to connect two points illustrated in the previous figure by dotted, dotted lines connecting uh, connecting the tomato to its nearest neighbor and K. Uh, is more relevant to, uh, to to the syntax. So K is the minimum number of distances with the nearest neighbor to classify the data. So how many nearest number of distances would I would basically say if I say, if I find, let's say for example, I may get something else here, which is very close to tomato and based on those three things that I may define tomato or fruit. Similarly, if I get something better, so which of the distances nearest three neighbors out here and the nearest three neighbors out there, which one it, you know, we, we kind of, uh, of course, in the case of tomato, we may or may not have the K uh, nearest three distances. Now, 
So from a syntax standpoint of view, I have predominantly be using R and R out here. So basically, uh, we see KNN set uh, is, uh, you know, the, you know, the, basically the set where it's going to get the data into. So KNN is the algorithm. You need a training set like we initially talked about. Uh, in, in, in the in the example, uh, the scenario example, you need a testing set and you obviously need the labels of training set in terms of identifying what I really want to do my classification again. So here, if I go back to this example, the labels ideally would be fruit, vegetables and proteins. And uh, and the K is equal to three, where I actually goes in the minimum number of distances with the nearest neighbor to classify data, which I can conclude that this data actually uh, in the new data which is coming can be classified into any one of the scenarios. Now, I'm going to get into the demo with our scenario. Okay, so here I have my R um, scenario. So the example that I'm going to run is um, is basically a wells. Uh, so it's specifically in case of oil and gas, and um, oil and gas, as you know, upstream uh, they have. They, they have go through the initial process of oil um, exploration and then eventually they build wells and those wells uh, you know they have a lot of data in terms of uh, what's the depth to be totally measured uh, what's the I mean, there are a lot of financial values associated with the wells in terms of the production volumes which is the most important and if the well is going to be a turnaround candidate or no and the volume variance so we uh, in in the business world from an oil and gas standpoint of view the health of these wells is something which everybody is kind of concerned and uh, now uh, well getting into uh, detail into the example so this is the data set we're dealing with and it's about 11,223 11, observation with 27 variables and uh, what we are going to be doing out here is we we are obviously the first and foremost is we need to be very careful in terms of classification or any kind of machine learning algorithm which we run we need to make sure the data is good and clean and if the data is not good and clean probably you can never be getting around to run your algorithm site and you may not even get the right results so here is a syntax where I actually just go and you know the all the null and any in values which actually come when I actually import the data is I'm kind of setting it up to zeros because that's kind of, so this becomes my train you know training set which is about one to nine thousand so I'm just going to kind of put this as a training set similarly this becomes my testing set okay now these are my labels of the uh, training set. Similarly, I may have the labels of my testing set. Sorry for that. And here I go ahead and finally run my algorithm. Run KNN with all those parameters. So I actually talked about the testing set, you know, um, you know, which is my training set, my test set, the labels, and K is equal to three, which we actually mentioned. Now. Apparently, let's go run this. And obviously, um, I'm going to run this. Sorry for that. And 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 the parameter which I classify my data on is uh, is the first parameter, the business unit. So that may may not make sense. I don't know. So it's something which uh, uh, it's just classification where where the next data which is really going to come, which business unit is this well really going to lie in. Or pro probably uh, on on a better case, I may I may take something different, and I may take uh, 26, which is you know is this well a performance, to, is it it's a turn over candidate or not? So let's get on to the cycle and run this algo. Sorry for that. Okay, so that the, the, the all right. So I'm sorry for this. It doesn't. These are the. I was just for the explanation standpoint of view. I kind of put this, which doesn't get there. So my apologies for this. And so here I am up, and I will go ahead and run this same stuff again. And here I go, and let's see how it actually comes out. Okay, so here is my data. 
So 78 is ideally, so one thing is that um, most of the algos within machine learning do not understand or do not want to basically spend the time understanding the alphanumeric data. And so 78 and 89 are values which are replaced for a yes or no. And so if I'm looking at uh, the data set which I've got and uh, you know, continuing with the part two of this, so if I'm looking at the data set which I've got and uh, here's my data set and the initial data set, uh, let me talk about that. Uh, this, the training data set, which is about 9,000 observation, and I need to, so I'm kind of replace this uh, yes and no with the 78 and, and, and 89. So 78 refers to this is a no, and 89 refers to a yes. And the, the data set which I have uh, is uh, is split into a small and a test data set. Now this is the test data set where which we run our assumption against. So the small data set is where we actually run the KNN algorithm from a training standpoint. We have to manage to get the training uh, set on that. The, the next thing we actually do a cross tab to basically figure out, uh, you know, the prediction which actually comes out of it uh, based on my new training set, on my new testing set, what is the correlate? So I had about 2,202 uh, records in my uh, testing set and about 9,000 records in my training set. After the training, I've managed to uh, built the response made, you know, from KNN set. And in a minute, let me just show what KNN response really looks like. So it talks about 78 and 79. It's taken the 2002 or, and now, but I need to kind of look at if my data, uh, you know, which is in my testing uh, set, and the relevance of the result set, which is come, coming in KW set one, which is the response from the KNN uh, clustering uh, based on. So I want to see what's the differential. And so I got about 2,202 records in uh, my testing set. And I've done a cross tab across my test labels and uh, you know, the output of the KNN. And here what I've done, uh, so if you look at the matrix, this is the test level. This is the KW set, and we do we do 78 on 78. So basically, a no unknown prediction. So what the algo predicted as a new test uh, data, which is going to be a no, and um, it was about 1985, which is uh, you know 1985 of the records are going to be a no. 36 of them are going to be a yes, and roughly, if I'm looking at <clears throat> if I'm looking at um, a total of 2002, uh, there's approximately close to about 2000 records uh, which are in line with the prediction uh, of the new data set. So our prediction algorithm is running at what rate? Let's probably take a look. So if I'm looking at about 1986, uh, no, sorry, 1985 plus uh, 36 divided by 2202, that's about doing a 91.7% percent percent prediction rate is quite correct. And the remaining stuff where we actually see a 78 on 89, which is close to about 68, and an 89 on uh, 89 on 78, which is about 130, these are something which uh, which are false positive. So if I'm looking at this and this, these are false. So, you know, these are the, you know, the real values, real positive values. This is the false positive value. So, so and so, we can deduct that about 91.7% of the times uh, this data set and this algorithm will be in a position to classify the data rightly. And, of course, there'll be about stray cases like tomatoes, which probably may not fall in either of them, which would actually be 68 and 139. So that's the case of tomato. And now I would want to kind of look at So that was a demonstration with R. Now I'm going to go into the next part as a demonstration with Windows Azure. So uh, we 
we've looked at um, I mean in terms of the model which we already talked um, and uh, we're going to be running the same stuff on the turnaround prediction on R we actually talked about uh, uh, you know it's got two execute R ship one is basically in, in just in terms to basically get uh, the packages which installed on R uh, ultimately everything within machine learning internally runs on R uh, so that's how you get a sense in terms of a lot of R which is happening below the hoods now what I've done out here is simply taking a cut and paste of uh, the you know what's available out here in my R studio and just gone ahead and put it out here and let's run this and let's see in terms of how what's what's the kind of output I get and the reason I want to kind of do this is basically kind of give you a sense in terms of what would be out of box uh, in terms of uh, Azure ML versus what would you really need would would one really need to do in case of uh, a real life scenario now first let's take a look in terms of what are the Packages which are installed on, uh, uh, you know, Azure ML from an R perspective, and so we can see a whole lot of packages. I mean, you can come back and go back and later take a look at this entire stuff. Um, next, I want to basically take a look in terms of what's my output. Now, the output which I get, oh, it's fine, it looks good, but it doesn't give me the insights in terms of what I really want to look. What I really want to look is this. This is exactly what I would want to be playing around with. Is basically getting to know in terms of how my algorithm is performing, what is my cross-tab report specifically in terms of the mixes and matches, and this is exactly what it gives me. I mean, I don't think probably I would get this kind of output uh, from typically from, uh, you know, from the Azure ML standard construct, and hence um, I went ahead and used uh, Execute R. Now, getting back into, now, where do we use KNN? It's pretty straightforward in terms of where do we use KNN. It's basically from a classification standpoint of view. There's not much of a relationship, which is, is, and the data is very complex, and trying to establish a relationship is fairly difficult. Um, now, getting into the SWOT, the last line which I have, strength, simple, effective, uh, make no assumption of the underlying data distribution, it really doesn't give a model out. So, fast training phase, weaknesses, does not produce a model, slow classification phase, requires a large amount of uh, memory, and normal features missing out, uh, uh, missing data requires additional processing. So, this is where KNN is. Now, just to let you know, while before I kind of get off or basically leave this presentation, I want you to guys to know that KNN is a very powerful algorithm in terms of clustering. So most of your big data projects which initially does come out, do start up, I mean, you're going to start up with clustering or classification of the data and that's really help you set your direction right. So please do use KNN as a starting tool and thank you for watching my presentation.